episode 95, our 95th week here at the uh, Town Hall Academy, and we're talking about taking great DEI. Who would have thought a year ago we would really want to sit down and, and talk about the quality of taking good pictures? And um, where's Kodak when we need one right now, right? So yeah. welcome to the Town Hall Academy. Uh, by the way, just so that everyone knows, you know, I love every time Scott goes out on on social media and he shows all his really cool shirts and mouse pads and stuff. And by the way, it motivated me, my friend, to uh, find my own stuff. And of course, um, I don't have a package to sell so that people can get it. So we're having a contest. And the contest is, is remarkable results not biz slash swag. And when you listen to the November podcast, you'll hear a special password that I give out. And just go to the site and fill it in. And uh, it's really working great. A lot of people are signing up uh, to earn some podcast swag. So uh, thanks for that. And I'll probably repeat it again in December. We're ready. Uh, who's with me? Oh, my God. Scott Brown from Connie and Dix and Diag Network. Thank you, Scott. And Scott uh, actually came to me and says, hey, why don't we have some fun and do a show on uh, taking good pictures? And you love taking pictures too, by the way. I mean, he's a... I do. Did you ever see Scott's setup? Oh my God, how many cameras and switches? And, <laughs> actually, you know, Scott, if it wasn't for you, so many of the events that we've done and held in our industry would never actually have seen the light of day and gone out to the public. So thank you for your passion with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Greg Buckley's with us, uh, no stranger to taking pictures uh, of not only vehicles, uh, but his walks every morning and all the things going on in his world. I mean, he's just so good at it from Buckley's Auto Care. And uh, Greg's going to do some fun stretching stuff for us today and maybe actually we'll try. <laughs> take a picture or two. Of us. We'll Jim Fleischman is here from Automotive Alley. Uh, he's, he's not far from me, maybe, maybe 15 or 20 miles. I did an episode with him and Shelly, his wife, at his business. And as I got the total tour of his business and he started to show me uh, how anal he was, was that the right word? Can we say that on the radio? Ah, I don't know if that's uh, a good idea. Uh, <laughs> about taking great pictures. You were one of the great uh, first people I thought of in having you on. So thanks for being here and sharing. And J.R. Portman is with us, the COO and VP of Five Stones Media. It's a social media site, no stranger to the automotive aftermarket, and a professional photographer for, what, 20 years, some J.R.? Yeah, I think 22 at this point, um, a little while. <laughs> well, your bio, you better update your bio. <laughs> so, so anyway, so we've got, we've got a great, great um, plethora here of, of experts. Scott, I want to start with you. Uh, I, I guess the phenom of DVI, when we think about, did you, oh, by the way, episode 376, I had a DVI roundtable, and it is really good. It was really stretching the bounds of where are we, how many are signed on, what's the, what's the challenge of getting our industry adopted into the digital vehicle uh, inspection revolution. And today, if you start, you've got a competitive advantage. And so many years down the road, it's going to be a competitive disadvantage if you're not on board with it. So it opens up, Scott, this whole brand new challenge of not only the tablets and the new disciplines inside, but you got to take pictures. Uh, right. It's the, it's the transparency. I mean, you're, and, and along the way, you're actually educating your customer and a, a smarter <laughs> customer uh, that can see the value in what you're delivering um, goes a long ways to, to building a, a healthy business. So um, there's a lot of lot of tools out there, and uh, I hope we get deep into this because uh, I see a lot of guys taking pictures, and we practice that here in our shop uh, as well. And and sometimes you know you look at an image where the technician took the image, he knows what he's looking at, but the image doesn't really articulate or explain exactly what's going on to the uh, person on the other side. So correct. Yeah, we take we take a lot of pictures also, and. Uh, um, yeah, I'm a big advocate for you can't sell what you can't see and in, in today's world. So if, uh, if we take a good picture, it, you know, when you're talking to a client or a customer and trying to explain to them what they're, what they're looking for, it's, it, life is good. It's easy. Um, so, you, you know, kind of take that whole mentality of I'm, I'm being taken out of the equation and, and, uh, um, you know, they see good pictures and they see that it's their vehicle and it, it's, it's a no brainer. It's easy. Yeah. And I would, add to, I would add to that, you know, mentioning that the upcoming uh, podcast about engaging the youth, 
these, especially people who have grown up on, on you know, Instagram and Facebook and stuff, people are, <laughs> attention span is shorter by the day. So uh, if you can show, don't tell sort of thing, it's just a builds trust as you guys have been saying, but also is a definitely a way that the, a younger audience is gonna rather see it and feel uh, a higher trust factor for sure. Yeah, that's a fact. You can you can take the uh, what do we got? We got seven seconds to try and confirm, or to, we have their attention for seven seconds. It's like yep. one second less than a than a goldfish. So when you get five. to that level, five seconds. Five. Okay, five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah five seconds. All right. So we're almost we're almost too saturated. We want the information up front first. A video is the only way to really explain it, and you know the techniques that we have um, today and the equipment that we have make it so easy that for shops that aren't incorporating a, a digital solution, they will be at a huge disadvantage. Um, not that they go out, you know, it's, it's not that you won't go out of business. It's that your processes are now 10 times longer to get an answer of a yes or a no from your client. So yep. it doesn't, it, it's a big help. So yeah, and also, you know, managing the, the customer's expectations. So, you know, mm -hmm. as time goes on and these customers are going to grow to um, assume that you're going to do a digital inspection, if they arrive in a service center and they're not doing a good comprehensive inspection with some nice details and, and some imagery to go with it, um, that's not the experience they expected. And uh, right. they're, they're going to likely seek that out uh, the next time they're, they're looking for service. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, guys. Uh, you know what I failed to do in the beginning is to thank my sponsors, um, boy, and, and they've been so so nice to be with me for for so long here. Uh, when your you know customer's engine or transmission fails, it's not the end of the road. A remanufactured drivetrain product for your customer from Jasper Engines and Transmissions will give your customer's vehicle a brand new lease on life. Uh, thanks, Jasper. Go to jasperengines.com. And brand new for the show is RepairPal. You know, after 10 plus years in business, RepairPal has become the nation's largest network of independent auto repair. The certification program ensures that customers who go to RepairPal certified shops will receive quality trust worthy repairs. Learn more at repairpal.com slash shops. So when you first started with VVI, guys, my, my question to you all is, okay, we started to get into it. We had to learn the new disciplines and you started to take pictures. Did Jim and Greg, Scott, were you all really saying, ooh, those are dark, that won't work? And you did you have to figure it out? And I, the reason we're holding this is as more and more people start adopting VVI each and every day, this could be, yeah, you know, the, the the companies are teaching guys how to do good pictures, but I'm not sure they're listening. And so hearing from the experts as to why in the beginning you need to learn how to frame and set up and have the proper lighting. And this is, this is going to be a new basic requirement of our industry. Yeah. I, th I think that, uh, you know, as you uh, adopt this new methodology of uh, doing a, a digital inspection, it's such a huge leap that, you're taking you're now taking a picture it's better than what you had before and uh, it's, it's really hard for a shop to be highly subjective of what they are delivering to the customer until they get some some activity underneath their belt uh, so I would say that probably in the beginning when we first started taking images you know we we thought hey they're they're great but as time goes on we go hey we can do a better job than this or I'll look at an image and go well, I can't see what's going on there because uh -huh. it's way too dark. Yeah, so. I think we, we've we've um, gone back in our files and pulled up old pictures that we've taken and uh, uh, to show the guys and say, hey, here's where we came from and, and here's what we're doing now and we need to pay a, a close attention to, um, you know, the background. We pay attention to what's in the background to make sure the picture, if they send that picture from the source that we gave them to someone else, to somebody else that, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's a good looking picture and it, and it represents our company well. So, you know, it, that's the nice thing about a lot of these digital inspections or the pictures that we take. I, I, myself, everyone in our company encourages them to pass the stuff on it and have other people look to verify that it does need that particular component or it's, it, it's, uh, you know, it just represents us well and, and just allowing everybody to pass it on. But we, we bring the old up 
to showcase, you know, here's, here's the style of pictures we used to take and, and this is why we don't do this. So we use that often as we go back to the past and, and show mm-hmm. these guys. Before anyone else chimes in, I think Jim just hit this one right out of the ballpark. I'm going to tell you what he actually said. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you what I heard. I heard Jim say, we have to protect our brand and we have to do it with great pictures. You just can't send a picture that no one can see. And I'm sure right. you all agree with that. And so the next thought that I had in my mind is there a stat out there that says good pictures you know, bad pictures, great pictures, close better, more deals. <laughs> oh, well, you know, a, a picture says a thousand words that can sell a million dollars, you know, so the quality of your picture uh, makes, does make a difference. You can't send something that's cloudy, grainy, unfocused, doesn't make sense. Um, you know, and, and honestly, today's technology that we have, like I'm holding in my hand, like I see on my bench, like we have on our, our, on our pads. Um, the technology is, is there already. So I don't think that that's a barrier for anybody to jump into. Technique is one thing, understanding what to look for, positioning the subject matter correctly, and being able to focus in on exactly what that piece can be. Um, that needs to be taught, but it's not, and I say this respectfully, it's not something that is overbearing for a shop owner or a, or a tech uh, to to work. I mean, if everybody pretty much has a camera phone today, um, if you're out taking pictures of your kids, of the ball game, of you enjoying your social life, then you really know how to operate a camera and you pretty much got, let's say, 75% of the technique down. Little things you could use, just, you know, just like I said, focus on the subject at hand, you know, if it's a leaking water pump, focus where the leak is coming from, if you can. If it's a leaky valve cover, same principle. You know, if you're going to do a video, hey, look, you know, no more than two minutes. It doesn't need to be that much longer than that. But just make sure that you, in your mind, that you have a, a process down where you're thinking of the subject matter and that you can go through it quickly, especially if you're doing video. I mean, you, want to, you, want to, you don't have to script it. You just got to know your subject matter, which most of us would. So it's not, not crazy. I think we, we, uh, we all have to do a good job at taking a look at these pictures. Um, as a technician, a technician takes the picture and uploads it to whatever source that they have in, in regards to a DVI uh, um, outlet. But they'll, they, don't, they don't view the videos and the pictures like we do before they're getting ready to send. Hey, do you have a better picture than this? Because this really doesn't do a good job. And, uh, but we, we, uh, we try to push to everybody that, you know, before you post it, take a look at the pictures and more and more and more of our guys are looking at these pictures and saying, that wasn't a good picture. And this was a good picture. Wow. That, that video is pretty dark. So they'll, they'll retake stuff. So we spend a lot of time making sure we have good, images and good videos and you know uh we're probably 15 to 25 seconds in in a video showing a tie rod end or a ball joint or Mm -hmm. or something in that nature you know uh, we always we always try to keep them short and when we when we look through our files we can quickly identify the beginning of the, the that particular vehicle and the end of it just by the process of pictures we take um so it's it's kind of interesting how it's all kind of evolved from you know, the flip phone and that small, <laughs> that horrible resolution little camera that we take from the flip phone. No offense if anyone still has one out there. <laughs> but um, but to, to what we have today, the cameras are incredible. JR probably, from his business, he probably knows better than anybody. I mean, that's that's your world is, is the picture and the imagery. Yeah, and, and what's interesting, like, so I teach classes um, about video and photography to the general public, like our focus is helping. We're talking about the importance of it for business. If you don't adapt to it, you're going to get left behind or brand protection, as Cameron was saying, you're going to look archaic and you don't, you don't want to be the guy who hasn't adapted. And it's not just enough, like, all right, we're doing the DVI photos. If they're bad, it's just, it's just as archaic, you know, mm-hmm. but um, the same rules that applied when I first learned photography in the dark room, the old school, the same thing, framing, um, you guys have said lighting multiple times. Uh, one thing when I teach, I, I, my first rule and probably the most important, important rule is be a boss. Like 
take the time to move the rag out of the picture or if there's something spilled, wipe it, <laughs> you know, like things that the, the person on the other end will see that will make them, I mean, they're judging your pictures, but um, just controlling the situation a bit more. And I'd love to hear from you guys about what lighting you found. I mean, you're not sitting there with studio lighting like I have and soft boxes around, or are you? Because um, that stuff can get pretty muddy. The inside under a hood is all, pretty much all black, right? So okay, I'm go. curious what you guys do. Yep, that's a great tool right there. Yep. That really yeah, shines that light. Really LED. Okay, yeah, now, for, for, wait a minute, guys. For the purpose of the audio that's going to be out next Wednesday, no one can see what you just held up. Right. There. So it's, a, it's a it's a tool. it's a it's a nice little light stick led light stick you know uh we use it it gives a nice lighting a good background you can intensify it uh scale it to like a hundred percent i think down to 50 percent so it uh it helps you really highlight the areas that you're going with so you know if um but just do an example here would so you, you hold see that, here would you hold that next to the phone is it magnetic up on something uh, yeah, you can. You can hang up right here. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, let me turn the camera around. All right. <clears throat> All right, so you can uh, highlight it, and we can go underneath Oh, I got it. Here. It's beautiful. Oh, got okay. it? Yeah. Okay, so you can see the mess. And like I said, we, we're pulling the Subaru motor over here that we're resealing, and um, we did a series of videos to keep the the client updated as we go along and we come back here and we're going to show them that we've got axle boots that are torn but you can see the light is good enough i mean it's, it's very clear it helps out and you can go underneath the whole car and from natural lighting well you know depending on your shop lighting uh you can get away with a lot from the from up above but down below these lights work great and this is where you'd want to really take a small investment and get in there so, now i know now some not to did I jump on you there, Carm? No. Go ahead, Jim. Um, we, everything that we take our pictures with is with our phones. All the guys are using their phones instead of tablets. And why we adopted the, the phone instead of the tablet is because the tablets, um, the, the quality of the camera it wasn't uh, as good as what I was looking to, to have take pictures. And a lot of the, 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 tablets that are out there didn't have a flash and or a way to turn a light on so that's why we 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 adopted we went after the the, the phones instead of a tablet version so that was what we chose to do it seems to work out well for us right yeah and, and, and just to add uh, jr you're, you're you're chiming you're speaking my language so yeah the, the photography basics uh really need to be taught right so and they're they're simple um just some the lighting end of it like greg was illustrating is great uh, a lot of times guys will take a flashlight and shine it on there and it's way over the top it, it, yeah it's got a hot spot to, in there yeah you need to be yeah. able to tone it back a little bit right uh, but one of the things I wanted to illustrate there when, when uh, Greg was under that car, see, sometimes you, a guy takes a picture or a, a tech takes a picture. He knows right where he's at in the car, what he's taking a picture of. But again, that client doesn't no know where, it, where it's at on the car. So a lot of times before you step away and, and check your, your image, you should maybe take one back further so that car, the customer has some point of reference you know is this the tire is this the left front of the car the the right rear of the car yep. that that sort of stuff to add that extra uh, image in there will add additional perspective so the customer will will become again educated and and know what they're looking at correct so why do i think that that's one of the most important things you just said and here's why i say that you know, uh, that's just a picture that Scott had. Uh, he's showing me I have a leaky boot, and it's not really my car. Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, yeah, you, you want to be authentic. There's a key. It, and, and most of the practices from all the DVI providers, you know, they, they instruct, and you should. You should take a, a picture of the front. Well, um, <laughs> let's go this way here. Take a front picture here of yeah. the bumper uh, and the license plate, you know, and then, like Scott says, Give them a reference point on where you're at in the vehicle, and then you can focus down into the subject matter that you want to discuss. You know, yeah, so. and, and a lot of a lot of um, DVI uh, related 
companies with the infrastructure, when you're going down through those checklists, uh, you're, you're literally doing a digital walk around. But and again, in our case, we, when you walk up to the vehicle, you're, you're taking your three to four pictures around the vehicle, then you step into the vehicle. So when we're showing a, a particular client, hey, here's the pictures that we took of your vehicle, you can see from one step to the other of physically when it was outside the shop to the inside of the shop and walk through to get to that particular bad spot. Just, you know, right. just like Scott was saying, you know, that outer, and then now here's the close up or the inner shot of that bad component. No, it works. It works well. So if, um, if there's the risk as Carm was saying about people not trusting like, all right, well, I shot an image of something. And then even if it's a backup of my vehicle, how do I know that's the undercarriage of my car or that kind of stuff? Why not use video more often? It's not, I, it's, I do. Yeah. We I, use, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious if what the what the technical limitations are. It, I mean, video can be tricky, but I know from from our like we shoot a lot for social media um, and websites, all, all, all the whole digital marketplace. I mean, three years ago, people would call. I'd be on a ton of photography shoots. These days, it's 75 percent video. Like that's yeah. what everybody wants to see. And we were I don't remember if we were on air or not, but we were talking about the uh, the, the attention span. But the less than 10 second video. And I've seen the charts about like the drop off is it right at five seconds of people's attention span, the short to the point video of like start to the car, go and look right there. And, that, and that's the end of the video, I would think would be highly effective with this kind of stuff. Well, uh, I, you know, when you're doing something like a 10 second video, it's great if you're just showing a visual like a spot, a dent. But when you want to get into a detail uh, and explain the situation, because I mean, my practice is, is I want to educate you. And I want to elevate you and I want to make sure you understand it. And if I can do that within two minutes, it's good. And I'll send you a direct tech met text video text message from my device to your device, even before the DVI is completed. It, it has worked great the, on the Subaru situation that we're doing right now. I did a three-step pro, uh, process this morning. I came in to give a video update um, and it, it, it takes the job from zero trust to 100% trust because they understand it, they see it. And I'm explaining what we're doing for the value and what their investment's going to be like. Um, so each video might be about, yeah, about two minutes, I think it was. But if you're doing a series of updates, boy, you have, you, you've just made a customer for life. And you, know, mm -hmm. and, and you get it done the right way. And it what takes I, out of the, well, go ahead, Carmen. No, I have to say this, what I heard from Greg, remember he just said, it's about a two minute video. It's a four-figure job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so if you almost would look at, if it's a $600 job, maybe it's a one-minute video. And I'm not saying that you can equate that, but what Greg is saying that, you know, the bigger the job, the, the more detailed it is, that it, you probably will want to invest in a few more minutes to get the video done. Of course done. you will. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, gosh, how much time do you spend on the phone trying to explain that situation verbally and then you have to write it down you could be spending 20 minutes or half an hour and still all the questions aren't answered the customer will hang up from you and go now what did he just say when he can take this video and go oh all right that's what he means that's what he means i now i get it and even if they take that video and they say well let me let me now go online and do my own investigation which you know some will at least you're backed up the other good point is I've had where we've done vehicles, we've totally taken a client's apart, a, a car apart. And we did a mini where we had to do, I, I think it was an oil pump or something. Anyway, the whole front clip came off, right? So his car, he's never seen his car disassembled in that manner. Well, he thought it was great. It was funny. People are blown away by that. They're blown away. And he was sharing it to all his friends and buddies and everything. He goes, look, look what they did to my car. <laughs> and he's saying, this is cool. This is awesome. So, you know, some of this stuff is, I, I mean, I like, of course, DVI is there, but I really like these one-to-one -one videos that we have a practice of doing. And it makes such an impact to the client because it's so personal. And some of our DVI solutions can do that with certain techniques. Um, but the, the more you get involved around video, uh, you know, the better you'll be. Like JR says, it's, it's moving towards a video world. And, you know, I, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, 
And like Greg, Greg just said, you know, it, it may be highly intimidating for some shops, especially if they're just now adopting the, uh, the digital documentation process, but practice makes perfect. So if you mm -hmm. just start practicing it, you can tell Greg is highly comfortable with the video delivery because he's <laughs> been doing it for a long, long time. Right. And you'll get there. Just, just don't just keep, keep getting better. Keep trying. And, right. Yeah. You'll crank Make out a, a, a differentiator that's uh, just going to move your business. I like, I like that word differentiator. And it's a, the good news in, again, from I get to see all these kind of stats from Facebook and Google and stuff. People's expectations of quality have gone way down. <laughs> Long gone are the days of like the highly polished stuff. It, they, we are talking about having quality images. You want to strive for that. But also people are all... Oh, it's not perfect. The video is not perfect. I really expected, you know, some Spielberg quality here. People don't <laughs> care. They're just used to the YouTube kind of thing. And, you know, um, I, 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 hearing you guys talk brings up two things that, and I don't uh, want to jump on the agenda or whatever, but one, when you are shooting video, I'm curious for those of you who are into it, how are you stabilizing? Cause like Greg's hand holding right now and he's doing a pretty good job at it, but, and we, we will shoot, you know, cell phone videos, high, like super expensive camera, whatever, the best camera is the one you've got with you, right? So if you're shooting on a cell phone, you know, how are you stabilizing? Um, and then my other question you guys can come to later is, is the staff, you know, bridging the gap between, okay, Greg, Greg down there is clearly um, all about it and he's a, the man, I'll be the face over, but not everybody likes that. So I'm wondering sure. what, how you get the staff or <laughs> maybe, maybe get people to get more comfortable with putting their own face in front of the camera or hearing their own voice. A lot of people don't like that. Well, uh, you're, you're correct, JR. It's very difficult. And I, do, and I do most of the video here, although we try and train my son and my service advisor do the same. The text, you now we're, we're evolving into a different uh, DVI platform, which has the capability to do a video with voiceover with no face. So all that can get incorporated. And, you know, that's where we're trying to train the other guys to go, okay, look, you don't need to see your face. You don't need to be on camera. Just speak clearly. And even if it's a, yeah. even if it's that 10 second video, it's better than nothing. And that way they can begin to get comfortable with things. It isn't going to be for everybody. That's a fact. It's just that, I mean, let's face it for us here today and maybe for some of the audience members, it, it's no problem. It's no problem. I try to put people into the mentality of, Look, if you're out on social media and you're doing selfies, what's the difference? I mean, how intimidated are you if you're doing a selfie and goofing off and send it to everybody in your, uh, in your stream? Now you're taking that principles, those principles and practices. Now you're trying to make money with it. Is it different? Maybe just from the sense of topic or content, but nonetheless, it's you in front of the camera. There's no difference. So why are you putting a barrier up? Why are you intimidated? because you're now talking to a one-to-one -one person instead of one to a thousand. So, you know. So let me add, a, add something there and I'm going to cue you up, Greg. Uh, so I, we were, we were last month we were in uh, Pennsylvania yes. for the uh, ASA super Saturday show. And, and I was right. teaching one of my classes, which is right. on the topic. It's uh, digital tools. And so we were talking about the, the stabilization and you were in the class and you, and you shared with us, a right. really good recommended best practice. So why don't right. you go ahead and cue that up for us? Okay. So if you can, if you would, what you do is you, and Scott, you put the word to it. All right. So we'll, we'll there's a partnership in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, it was triangulate, triangulate your hand. And basically your underhand comes over top and I can't do it. I'm holding the actual phone, but you stabilize it by holding it under your camera hand. And then there's a technique to actually, there you go. Thank you, Scott. Kind of like this. Now, right? actually, yeah, you put it under your hand. Now, go further up your hand. Right, right there. Okay, now, like actually, you want, want to make a, you can make a knuckle, actually. Make a knuckle. All right, now, see your knuckles? See in between your knuckles? Mm -hmm. All right, that's where the camera rests. And if there you just, go. all right, if you just smooth, if you just rotate down, like, around, you can see how easy you are. And it's almost like a jib. I guess that's right. Jib or gib. I don't know. JR, what do you call Gimble. it? Jib? We call gimbal. it a gimbal. A gimbal. gimbal. Okay. All right. So you got your gimbal and you've got the effect. So I can be very smooth and rotate around and go up and down. Let's, let's practice. Okay. So now we're under the car. We have our light, right? And we're moving back and forth very smoothly, very easily. And it's a, it's a little technique. That's all. 
but you can see where you really stabilize the camera a lot. You go in, you can go out. And if you learn how to operate your camera the right way, now the other, are you guys seeing four screens or five screens on, on your panels? Four. Or There's four, okay. Well, five four. with Carm. There's five with Carm. That means you're seeing the backside oh, of my shirt right now. You, you had another one. Do you want me to try to bring that one in? You can, and that way you can see how I'm doing it while I'm actually performing the, see if you can bring me in. For, Hang on, I'm going to see if I can bring your other, your other piece in here, Greg. Thank yeah. you. Hang on. Here it is. Let me see. Uh, let, let's see if we can make this work. Right. You should be able to as long as my, oh, hold on. Uh, we see black. Camera. Got it. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. Now All right. Now you're seeing me doing the video, right? It's like inception right. here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you can see where my hand is underneath and I'm pretty smooth going around, looking up, zooming in. I could take a picture from there if I wanted to with my uh, iOS. All right. Zoom in on a leaky power steering rack, point it out and then go on down here and just keep traveling on down the undercarriage of the car. So you're oh. focusing in, on different areas at the same time you're just being very smooth as possible so it takes a little practice but and greg yes, on, here's a thought that i had as you're doing and moving around mm -hmm. in you've got to be sure that you get the color of the car or something going on so sure. this video continues to have there you go right. that right. may be the start of it and then you just flow through it and, and just to, right. just to ensure that that customer knows it's their car yeah you you need an identifier and some people now in california or other places you need two license plates but a license plate is an identifier or something like this it's very particular mm -hmm. to their car yeah. you yeah. want to make sure that you take a video of all their scuff marks and and uh accidents yep. and stuff like that and you go from there so you know um you can accomplish a video in no time flat whereas so, if you take pictures you're staging it from corner to corner so, so again so yeah, one of one other thing worth mentioning here that didn't get talked about is that some of the higher end phones out there today have uh, a built in stabilizer. Yes. And, and if you yeah. don't have it on, uh, you should practice turning it off and then turning right. it on and you will gain a, a high level of respect for its capabilities. It's, it's a correct. So yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. There are also third party things. I, you know, I won't drop any names, but I've played with a bunch of them that, I get advertised all this stuff all the time because of what I do, but little stabilizers, handheld stabilizers specifically for cell phones that man, people will, will, if you don't do a good job of stabilizing like Greg is doing, it, it gets worse and people get sick watching the video. That's all. That's yeah, thing right. Yeah, we get motorized gimbals guys. And I've seen them out there for like 300 bucks. Um, DGI, I think it's DG, DGI. Right, yeah. DGI is one of the best names. I mean, there's one called Gimbal Guru, I believe. Um, okay. I, I got one for $150 one time. That's you know, good. just like anything else, the longer they're out there, the more competitors and the cheaper they get. Yeah. But um, if you're doing cell phone photography, it, it works really well. And it just takes what Greg's doing and adds even whatever. But as Scott was saying, some of them are built in now. It's amazing, the technology on the phones. So, guys, uh, let me ask the, uh, the shop owners here, if you're going to take a video – uh, would you take one just for the uh, base case issues that are going on with the vehicle? Maybe not send it, but knowing, you know, it was in here and it, you know, last time it was here, then it got scratched. I mean, is, is taking videos or stills a great base case uh, to keep on the history of the car? Mm, big CYA. You know, you want to make sure that you, I mean, it's gotten us uh, plenty of um, relief from clients who one way or the other didn't feel like they got the value and they were trying to present a different scenario or reject the, the fee altogether. Um, so when we provided proof to the credit card companies that, you know, Hey, this was all signed off. Here's the situation. Boom, boom, boom. It was, it was you know, not good for, not good for the person trying to uh, take advantage of us. So, hey, one, yes. one thought I just had on that, um, you know, taking a base case. So there's a there's all this talk about privacy and inside of your phone, you do have you've got settings where you can allow it to geo tag uh, or geolocate the actual image being taken place. If you're taking pictures on a vehicle in your property, you know, for for vehicles, I highly recommend that you enable the geo encoding so that it has some 
uh, point of reference, you know, in case you end up in court or something, they can't come back and say, oh, this picture probably wasn't taken at your shop. It was taken somewhere else. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, this will basically point. trump right. trump all of that. So um, just thought I would bring that up. Good stuff. Scott teaches a class. Um, in fact, I when I saw him at Super Saturday, I'm not sure if that's when we scheduled this or we just said, hey, I can't wait to have you on. I don't remember exactly how, but of the topics that you cover, Scott, have we missed anything here yet so far? Um, well, no, I think we've, we've pretty much covered it. It's, it's, you know, it's a composition, the lighting, but here's, here's one area that, uh, you know, maybe we're not, we haven't really covered. These images could easily be repurposed for some social marketing. Mm -hmm. So if we, we see something very unique in our shop, um, we may want to, like share it and show, you know, Hey, check out how these rodents like chewed up all these wires and caused all this havoc. It could, it could, uh, you know, create some sort of attentiveness to people that aren't your customer. And they say, wow, Oh wow. Hey, that, that reminds me, I live up in the, in the Hills here and, and uh, you guys take care of this stuff. What do you recommend? Maybe that's a point of contact for you. So again, the quality of image could be repurposed later. And uh, so the better that quality, um, the better, better outcome you're going to have. Yeah, Scott, done that. I, yeah, go ahead, Jr. I'm oh, sorry, Jim. I was thinking the same thing the whole time. It's like the hardest thing for us, like we, we do all sorts of uh, services uh, at, at our marketing agency, but to get people to do the thing, um, to take the pictures, once you have those images or video, there's a yours. thousand channels to put them on. Uh -huh. uh, one particularly that comes to mind that people always forget about is Google itself, Google, the Google My Business listing, the local listing. If you've got the camera out, just taking out and taking anything, populating that, and even there's a, there's a posting component to Google My Business, is really will set, set your shop apart from other people because you're the one showing images. And right. you know, whether it's a general wide angle shot image that you never had the time for, or the close up of the technician working on any fill in the blank, I mean, that stuff is really valuable to the public to see. So I've got this great picture of this leaking power steering piece that Greg just showed us. And I could literally just go on social media and say, Do you know that maybe your power steering rack is leaking? Come on in, let's uh -huh. do a comprehensive inspection. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. maybe a, maybe a best practice, not not so much on the imaging, but uh, as you're writing your your short little snippet of of information, try to use some tags around that. You know, that maybe describe the vehicle because mm -hmm. now the customer that's driving that Subaru of the same vintage or what have you has some sort of connection, and that can actually help bring in uh, additional business. And we, we've yeah. used we've we've used the pictures and and videos that we've taken um at the at the service counter to prep somebody hey just to let you know here's a common problem with this particular vehicle and we've shown them if you don't take care of this this will be your outcome and you don't want this outcome and uh, and, and it's a and it's a picture of the exact vehicle that they particularly have and we have them in our in our uh, infrastructure of all of our of our pictures we have them all filed so you, we can pull that up and show somebody hey here's the here's what a caliper service looks like when you hear this term this is what we're doing here's a here's a transmission service I mean, what it entitles this is a pan the, the filter the uh, you know the cleaning components of it and you know we use them in that basis to make sure that people understand again the clarity of the pro of the of the process of what we're doing yeah, it demystifies right. it, which is which is great for the public. I do I do wonder, do you guys have systems or something in place to ensure that you don't get yourself in trouble? Maybe if I use an image of someone's car and they don't like it down the line, they see it on social and they didn't they don't like someone talking about that as um, you know, some sort of release form or, or in place. We don't have, we don't have that. Yeah. Had a collective. <laughs> no, well, no, we we've, we've incorporated some of that language into our estimate sheets, letting the customers know that. You know, hey, your your vehicle um, and any unidentifiable information from the vehicle will be could be used for either training or marketing purposes, and that's very simple. It's and that, you know, that covers you. Yeah, so that I, pretty much. Yeah, and um, a couple of things that you're seeing right now on the second screen. You see how I have the camera held right on the back. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. See where? I, and this is how I hold the phone. It's a little technique they can use. It helps with stabilization, helps secure the phone. You can go back and forth, up and down. So I want to get that out of the way. 
Hey, Greg. As, yeah. I got I got a question for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so this this would go towards how you're hanging on to the camera, and the reason why I'm saying this is because a couple of people might think of this as uh, amusing. But um, why are you hanging on to the camera that way and not holding it straight up and down? Because you're getting a much larger <laughs> view, you have much more camera uh, screen time holding it vertically than you would horizontally. So would so you say? So would you say that's the right way to take a picture? It's always the right way for me. And some people, <laughs> I know that's my some, joke. Is everyone yeah. is always holding the camera vertically like this right, and right and in the no. camera world in the phone world everyone right. has been trained to do this when this is a direct right it's, way it's right. dependent it's dependent on what you're delivering to now if you yes, go to exactly. instagram right so now instagram is your portrait i used to tell people i go if you're going to take a video in portrait mode like that that's basically also called amateur mode right yeah. Correct. <laughs> so hold it like no, this but that no, but now everything. you go to instagram and they're expecting a vertical image yeah and, and everybody recently, is taking pictures and videos this way and that and is the yeah. correct way but jr you would be the expert to answer this i've heard that the vertical mode gets more views yeah we used to give people a lot of crud for you know flip your phone you, exactly it's like you don't know what you're doing if you do that or the I see newscasters do it when they try and utilize Facebook Live. They yeah. start vertical and then they turn it and the whole thing is like, you're showing this to thousands of people. It looks terrible. Oh, wow, people. But, but Scott's right. It depends on the platform you're using. Some of them will crop it square automatically. Uh, I'll tell you, vertical video is supported almost universally now. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer the mark of the amateur. So it depends <laughs> on what software you're using. I will say horizontal is always going to give you, it's the most like your mind will accept that view and you can showcase more. I would de I always default to horizontal, but video is tricky. It depends on it depends on the platform. Okay. I just wanted to bring that up. I, I didn't mean sure. To up Thank, on you. That. Thank you for that, and uh, and I'm going to I'm going to do a pause. I, this has been fabulous. I mean, I love the the interaction and, and all the great things that are being shared. But I, I really have to thank my two sponsors, in fact, for making this a free um, a free show each and every Friday for the aftermarket. You know, Jasper has over 2,000 associates, three manufacturing facilities two distribution centers and 45 branch offices all across the country. There may be one in your town. They're all working to produce, transport, and deliver the perfect product for your customer. That's what they do best, keep customers happy. So you can visit jasperengines.com. And new to the show is RepairPal. You know, you, would you like to become a RepairPal certified customer? Well, you need a minimum of a 12-12 warranty, a shop management system, a high customer satisfaction score, and recent tech training. I'm sure you qualify. Learn about free tech training at repairpal.com slash shops. Jim, you like to use props in your pictures. There you go. So I'm Perfect. sure everybody has seen, whoops, everybody's seen the, the typical, um, you know, brake gauges, tire pressure, uh, digital tire pressure gauges, anything in that manner. But yeah, I have, Everything that we're using is is color coded. Uh, we use plastic gauges instead of the metal gauges. We can get them wedged into spots, and it just gives you a perspective of size. And we use the brake gauges in in areas all over the vehicle. Um, and the same with the tread depth or or the depth gauge. I shouldn't say use use it so much as tread depth, but a depth gauge. Um, so you know everyone has that green red you know stop go mentality and uh, green is good and red is bad so no we use a lot of it and uh, we have a set right up front at the counter and when a particular client sees that picture or there's a question of a picture out come the gauges and and we go over that so it definitely it works it works well so if you're not using it I would encourage it yeah, one other uh, one other piece I would chime in there with is that if you're taking a picture of something that is totally unknown, you know, and a lot of these things are unknown to a, to a client, to give them some point of reference, you know, you remember the old crime videos where they've got the little scale out or they maybe have a quarter there because they're taking a picture of something, you know, having your hand in there or your thumb or something to give them some reference of what size this thing is uh, can also go a long ways towards uh, communicating, you know, the message. Correct. And, and I, I think one of the, be the better things that most of the DVI solutions provide now is the ability to mark the unit, mark the, the particular uh, subject matter, and then to describe it with 
some content or a line or two underneath of it. So they can do, you, get, you can do some really good markup now on some of this stuff. And that does help. That's a big, big plus. Correct. We have got, we have, uh, our guys have gloves and I, we try to encourage them. If we're going to, if you're going to hold a particular part in your hand, put a glove on, uh, you know, it just makes you look like a more professional mm -hmm. shop versus you're taking picture of a bad component in your hand and then you have a greasy hand. And again, with the, with the high def quality pictures that are being taken from these phones and or, uh, these, these tablets, you know, you, you can look at somebody's fingerprint if you want. And, it, you know, they don't clean their hands very well. Just put a glove on. It takes, it, it takes a second to put a glove on to, hand, to hang on to that part, and it, and it gives that particular uh, perception that they really care about, one, themselves, and two, the particular client's product or their car. So Yeah, I love that. That's, that goes back to that well, saying the, hard, the most important part is, like, controlling, like, slowing yourself down and thinking about how it's going to look like. I got to get this done and doing it really quick, and I don't care about the lighting. I don't care about the scenario, but... That's cool. And I wonder um, if you guys have run into, or if anybody listening might be thinking, uh, my job is to do this stuff and do it fast. I mean, that the clock matters here. A lot of what we're talking about means slowing down. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a change in how you guys have been dealt with that, with, you know, how conveying the importance to you know, the members of the team, like this is, this is worth it to slow down. It's a little bit of a change in mentality. Well, all this stuff is, I mean, it's a team effort uh, to be, uh, to have a, your, your company uh, get involved with DVI solutions and pictures. And it's something that, just like anything else, you have your processes in place and you talk about it. I mean, we talk about the pictures we take. If something is really unusual uh, that we haven't seen, um, then they'll call me over and we'll do a video. And that video turns around and, you know, we'll do one clip for two minutes and then the next one might be three minutes we might enhance a little bit but from the phone that goes right up to our youtube channel and that starts the whole seo process from there you know where we start to build another uh, piece of content and we place it into our channel and we start growing it and you know we've been we've been pretty successful with the channel um you know so again the advantages of your your video and even your pictures put it on a slide deck and get it up, you know, into any other kind of platform that's going to helpfully, hopefully gain another process, another prospective client. And that's what, uh, that's the value that we have. I mean, we have so much content within our shops, the things that are curious that people are curious about, um, that we can do many things with it. Uh, you know, we can like, the biggest thing for me is to educate the client. It's so valuable. And, you know, for, and I, I've always said this for collision shops, collision shops have such a really great advantage because people, will, let's face it, we, we like to see a wreck and we can tell body panels off or, or whatever, but then all of a sudden, miraculously, this vid, vid, uh, vehicle comes back to life. It looks good. It looks great. Wow. What a, what a job, you know? And so they can do a chronological uh, set of uh, pictorial or video of the process from here it was when it came to us to where it is now. And I just think that the, the, the amount of content is just amazing for them guys. And, well, in the, you know. in the, in the body business, you know, a customer has an accident, their car smashed up, they get it yeah. fixed and they see that it's fixed and they understand, wow, that looked like an expensive repair where they drive a vehicle to our facilities and they drove it there. And then all right. the problem was, was a check engine light. And now Greg, you have the engine out on the floor right. and they didn't want to know why it's $6,000 because, um, you know, geez, I dropped it off. The check engine light was on. You're telling me it's $6,000 to just to get that little light bulb out. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and, you know, and so it's, now it's here funny. you have the video and pictures to prove it. So there, it's just so much value in what the video and the picture can offer to anybody in this industry. Well, here's the, uh, Jimmy, you brought a good point up because the client behind me with the Subaru has never dealt with us before. Um, was referred to us and came in complaining of it was a check engine light, but he also said, it's I've a got, Subaru. It's a Subaru, right? He goes, <laughs> I've got, he goes, I've got leaks that are coming on my manifold. And, and I was told that my valve covers are leaking. And I, and, and I went and I, and I told the guys when he came in, I said, what's the mileage? 130. I go, okay, you know what we're kind of looking at, right? Just mm -hmm. the history of Subarus. So, we went step by step and sure enough, he was comforting. I gave him initial projections of cost and he, he said, fine, no problem. But I backed it up with 
you know, videos of what we're doing, explaining Absolutely. everything. And before you know it, I mean, this is going to be a very respectable, healthy repair and a healthy ticket and a profitable one. But you have to have these tools. You, there's no way. And let me, let me emphasize something real quick, too, is that that took all of five minutes to secure a client and the ticket and to gain his trust because of the video content and the way that we, that we do them and the way that I do them. So and you gave them no reason. You correct. gave that particular person no reason right. to not believe every word that's coming out of your Absolutely. mouth. Absolutely. And it's because all if you, right in front of you. Yeah. If you don't show them what you're talking about, yeah. all you are is what everyone else has been in the industry. They're sitting there talking to you on the phone, trying to figure out, is this person really working on my car? Are they really doing what they say they're going to do? It's over with. It, this ends all so, of that. And, it was, and, and I backed it up with a t video from 2010 that we did the same exact situation for another Subaru, sent it to him to let him know that, look, this isn't our first rodeo you know, with, with these Subarus, here's our experiences. What Again, you can go back to that file. You guys, if yeah. you guys are building that, that file, you can go back and go, Hey, wait, just to prove to you, this is not new that here's yeah, right. all of our experiences in this Avenue. Right. That, that's Thanks good. guys. I, I'm going to interrupt one last time. I, uh, I didn't get my little, um, sponsors, uh, comments in early enough. So it sounds like, geez, it's all karma's doing talking about sponsors. Well, God, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. So thanks again, Jasper. Um, yeah, Jasper, you know, quality and customer service is absolutely their number one goal. Ever just get, get a chance to listen to their president speak? He goes out and does it. Please listen to him. They are passionate. Their associates take pride in their work, and it shows in the quality drivetrain products that they produce. Now, their quality and customer service has kept them growing for 76 years. JasperEngines.com. And to repair pal, if, um, <clears throat> did you know that 2,300 shops already get an average of eight to 12 new customer calls from repair pal every month? Well, there's no long-term contracts and referrals from partners like CarMax and USAA add even more value. Learn more at repairpal.com slash shops. I have a final question and then I want to go around the room and have you guys sum it up. This was great. For the first time ever, I've had a chance to absolutely observe the Facebook, um, the Facebook chatter and of course what's going on in the Zoom channel. Um, many kudos and high fives and support to all that you're doing and saying and get into the Facebook repurpose video here over the weekend and look at some of the great comments that are coming up. There are some great ideas tossed out. So here's my my question. And after you, you know, we, we share some of these ideas, then let's 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 wrap this up. Is there a requirement per digital vehicle inspection that comes in that a tech is doing? It's a requirement of a certain number of pictures that need to be done. Um, we don't have a requirement as of yet. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't speak like that. Um, we we have required the first four pictures are of the vehicle, the mileage, uh, the oil change sticker, and then uh, if it if it leaves, there's one last picture, uh, or when it leaves. I shouldn't say if it leaves. We want them all to leave, but um, the the requirement from that is. If you're suggesting something, you better have a picture or video of it, and it better be on that checklist. If it's not on that checklist, you know, then we're gonna have a conversation. What happened? Well, did you did you lose your phone? Well, they didn't lose their phone. Uh, I can tell you that, and uh, um, or it was just in a bad spot, or or you know, like uh, you're making a suggestion for a cabin air filter. Some of these cabin air filters you have to really work to get to it. Mm -hmm. So we would be making a mileage and or time-based recommendation and say, you know, uh, on our checklist, we physically uh, have a have a spot that says uh, uh, not easily accessible. So if it's not easily accessible, how often do you think it's been changed? And if the customer, customer's never been brought up that point, they go, just go ahead and do it. And then you can start them on a regular service interval, you know, that 12 to 15,000 mile interval for a cabin filter. Mm -hmm. um, but, but those are what we have recommend. Um, I Thank shouldn't you. say recommended, but our, our, our guys are expected to have for us. We'll do, we'll do 15 to 50, 15 being if this vehicle is fairly, you know, relatively new, it could be its first service with us. Uh, well, it's first service period. Um, or a, a routine maintenance where we have everything documented prior. 
the 50 gets up to where we're doing pre-purchase inspections for vehicles. Then right. we'll really be detailed because the client is paying us to do the inspection and do complete thorough from, you know, A to Z, bumper to bumper. And that's when we'll get a little bit more heavier into the uh, picture taking. But, well, you know, we start with a minimum. That's what our process is. That's what we say. Everybody has to have at least 15 pictures and, and, and go from there. You know, what a, what a powerful thought about the 50 pictures and the pre-purchase inspection. It's almost like it's a baseline, and you now become the counselor for that customer. And oh, that it, it absolutely does. It helps negotiate the price one way or the other. And uh, for the client, it's their information. If the dealer said, and we get referrals from dealers that will have their clients come up and do an inspection for us and vice versa. So whoever hires us, it's their information. We, we only give it to them. If they request us to share it with the pr prospect on either side of the deal, then we oblige and we let them go at it. So, you know, we do help. We, we promote the fact that we can help you get a better price if you have it inspected. But and, we, can, and we've been successful. But Greg, you can also counsel the, yeah, oh yeah. the repairs as this vehicle, you know, sure. moves down the highway. If they buy it and you're going to do the repairs, you can say, hey, listen, get this. They got to knock off 700 bucks because we got to do this right away. But you're going to spend two or three more thousand dollars over the next couple of years because we've, we've, we've discovered this stuff. Well, yeah, we, we try and we try to remain neutral through the whole process because we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, kind of tick off the person, the, if it's a dealer referring the client to us and we, the people we work with clearly know that we're going to be upfront and honest with what we see. Pictures can't lie, you know, and then as for the prospect, we say, well, maybe you can look at this in a different way, or maybe this does need to be serviced uh, before you purchase it or, or ask about it. That's what it is. It's just ask about what, you know, they can do with this particular problem now before you purchase it. And most of the time it's, a, it's an amicable situation and we're, you know, we're thanked by the, by both parties. Of, so I understand. Thanks. How many pictures, Scott? Uh, we really don't have a, a set of minimums. Uh, we, we try to practice, you know, documentation with images when it makes sense. Um, we do a full comprehensive inspection on every vehicle that comes in for, you know, general service. And that includes like a health check, uh, you know, with the, either a factory scan tool or aftermarket. And a lot of those will actually produce a report and an image itself, or we do a screenshot of the image. And not, that doesn't mean taking a picture of the computer screen with the camera. And that maybe that's another topic for discussion. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, where it makes sense, usually when we're trying to show, hey, this thing has, has had mice in the cabin air filter, or what have you, that's what we, we try to bring forward. Uh, one last thing I did want to bring up, JR brought brought up the privacy part or the release part. Maybe that's a uh, another uh, discussion uh, that you can have, Carmen, in the future, and and I'd love to be part of that uh, conversation if if uh, need be. Yeah, I think that's a major unknown that uh, I, people could point fingers in multiple directions. I think that's a good one. I I think Scott. Let's book it, Carmen. Scott. Uh, that yeah. sounds like that sounds like Geek Three O. To me. It does. <laughs> yeah, it does, Greg. You know, you know, Greg, Greg is on my my Geek 2.0 uh, uh, panel, and I think actually we're due for one, Greg. <laughs> due for one. Maybe what we'll do is we'll ask Scott to come in, and we'll yeah, sure, sure, because that's 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 kind of the edge that we're in, Scott. We're talking about that's right. you know, all of that uh, that legal e stuff that that tech has to do with our. With our with our industry, so all right, Greg. I think I think it's just like okay, we're here Carm is just creating all this stuff and all. This is how it works. This is it's just <laughs> just it's in the big mix, master. Hey, um, I, I know I was going to ask you all for a final word, but we're 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 at our hour, and it's been incredible. This this I thought we were going to talk for a half hour and be done with it. This is great. But does anyone have any final thoughts? Yes, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. There's nothing that you can't erase before you send it out. So try and try again. And please, the mindset is if you're doing it socially, you can do it professionally. Just keep in mind on who your audience is and, and go from there. So I want to hammer down. I want to hammer down on uh, JR's uh, comment, be a boss. You know, when you're shooting that video and you're panning around, 
be conscious of the trash that's laying on the floor or the, you know, the French fries or the French fries that didn't make it into the trash can (laughs) because the customer is going to pick up on that. And that is you, that's your brand. So uh, be a boss. I like that. (laughs) <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll just uh, say that digital film is cheap. <laughs> we don't have to worry about, you know, the, the hardest thing about all this with all the technique to discuss is just doing it. And as we've been discussing, there's a lot of benefits that come with just getting in the habit of doing this stuff. There's a, some hurdles to overcome, but at the same time, it'll force people to be better shop and give you a lot of, a lot of content and stuff to build. And I think a lot more success can come from it. Yeah. D- I think delete uh, the comment that I constantly say to, uh, everybody delete is easy create they don't have a create button if it's not there anymore so it once the vehicle's gone you can't create a picture so if we took five or six pictures of a particular instance or item and we can pick the best out of those one two three four or five and delete the rest that's easy so delete is easy and create is uh i haven't found a create button once the vehicle's gone Thanks, guys. Don't ignore the creativity and the, the need to do this. I, I, I think that's the best thing is uh, uh, it's just a picture. No, it's not just a mm, picture. Anymore. It's money. It's money. It's, it's money. Thank you to Scott Brown from Connie and Dix and Diag.net. Greg Buckley from Buckley's Auto Care. Jim Fleshman from Automotive Alley and J.R. Portman, COO and VP of Stone, Five Stones Media. Guys, thank you for being here on, on thank you. Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, Appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. See ya. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Have a great holiday weekend there. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, man.